In this video, we're making a really small Arduino-based FPV drone you control through its own Arduino transmitter, harnessing the power of DIY drone building for the in-depth learning experience and thrilling first-person view racing from the comfort of your home. Make your own DIY miniature camera drone from either popsicle sticks or 3D print with my own design that utilizes common Arduino-compatible modules that you can purchase on a low budget. But here's the big question that's buzzing in the air. Will it actually fly? The first step in finding out is to make it. So join me on this elaborate journey by taking a look at the parts we need, which include a set of brushed cordless motors with propellers, parts to make a custom motor driver board, modules for the flight controller and a receiver, a 3 gram FPV camera, a lipo cell with connectors, parts for holding things together including popsicle sticks if you choose to make the wooden frame, or PLA filament if you choose to 3D print your frame. All parts and supplies are listed with product links in the description below this video. To make the popsicle stick drone frame, we'll print out the blueprint sheet for the wood and rubber cutouts, a free resource file I came up with which you can download from the link below. Let's cut out all the wood piece stencils and begin gluing them onto some ice cream popsicle sticks with PVC glue stick. Now it's as straightforward as cutting out the pieces following the outlines with a hobby knife. We'll also soak the most fragile parts in superglue to prevent breakage while cutting the arms which will hold the motors. Pieces like frame posts can be cut from a matchstick. Now that we've cut out all of the frame pieces, we'll help reduce the weight of the overall frame by sanding down each piece till they're as thin as a credit card, except for the forearms which need their original thickness for strength. With that, let's begin assembling the frame. Once assembled, the frame should look like that of one from a larger 5-inch FPV drone. And since this drone will also have an FPV camera, let's add this piece of wood to the front so it'll point slightly upward. Next, let's poke a couple of holes for the power connector to protrude. Heading back to the blueprint sheet, let's take some bicycle wheel tube rubber and use the stencils to cut out the drone's bumper guard strips and glue those to the frame. To strengthen the frame even more, let's coat the most vulnerable areas with a lick of superglue. If you choose to save time and cut out the fiddly work by instead 3D printing your drone frame, consider purchasing my 3D model of the frame through clicking the link in the description below. But in this video, we'll stick to using the wooden frame out of the two options to keep it more DIY friendly. Next up, let's work on making the drone's motor driver board. If not ordered from the links below, components to make it can be found in old electronics. I found my resistors and diodes this way. When dealing with sensitive components like these field effect transistors, be sure to wear an electrostatic discharge wrist strap to prevent zapping them with the built up static electricity from your body. We should have four sets of each SMD or surface mount component. On a perforated board, we'll start with soldering the MOSFETs, followed by the Schottky flyback diodes, and the 10 kilo ohm pull down resistors. We'll finish off by soldering a line for ground and the power line which will be soldered on later. Let's cut, clip, and sand the little board to reduce its weight and size. It doesn't even weigh a single gram? Nice! Now let's hook up some signal wires and create that power line for each transistor that I mentioned of earlier. To take things to another level, we're powering the drone with quality components from DF Robot. We just received some contributing parts for the drone such as a tiny passive buzzer, a 6 axis motion tracking sensor, and a set of 4 brushed cordless motors which we're soon to install into our DIY frame. And if you're a maker who loves robotics or building drones like I do, dfrobot.com is your one-stop shop for those kind of electronic parts with their extraordinary selection of motors, sensors, microcontrollers, single board computers, camera boards, along with AI cameras, and so many more parts to get the most out of your projects. What I find truly sets DF Robot apart isn't just their high-end components, it's their commitment to empowering makers like you and I with the most accessible and up-to-date equipment to pursue our passion. So if you're ready to take your projects to new heights, click the link in the video description below to shop for your parts at dfrobot.com. Let's continue the drone's assembly by installing this set of 6mm cordless motors into our frame secured with superglue. 
Having the wooden top off will allow for better access to install the newly made motor driver which is glued in this crevice. Next we'll install these zip ties pointed down for both the drone's feet and for securing the motor wires. Now comes the wiring of the motors. We'll connect them directly to the flyback diodes with like polarities according to the diagram which you can find linked below and not the way I show here due to using the wrong pairs of motors. Please excuse me. With a power supply we can run a quick test to see that each motor runs when pulling the transistors high. Next we'll focus on prepping the drone's modules for installation, starting with the NRF24 radio transceiver. We'll remove the soldered pin headers to reduce weight, replace them with wires for power and communication, and then glue the radio module into the rear of the frame. Against potential short circuits from the motor driver being exposed, let's seal it off with some capped on tape. Now we're going to make the drone's flight controller using an Arduino Pro Mini microcontroller board, the 3.3 volt version since it'll be running off just a LiPo cell, paired up with the MPU6050 gyro accelerometer sensor to determine the drone's orientation. We'll mount and connect it to the Arduino using only a 2 pin header for the 2 wire communication and a couple of more wires for power. As it works with 3.3 volts and 5 volts, I do suggest you power it directly from the LiPo battery for a more consistent power supply. Against shorting, we'll patch up the radio module's pins with hot glue before sliding in our flight controller stack, which gets secured with a dabble of super glue at the module's crystal oscillator for support. Let's solder a temporary power connector with wires for the battery to connect to the flight controller. Now you see diverted wires going out to the right for driving the motors and wires at the left of the drone for the radio module's connection. However, we'll begin wiring for power, starting with wiring the NRF24 to get power from the gyro module's 3.3 volt regulator as it has filtering capacitors which works in perfectly, reducing the need of additional caps. Then we'll work on getting the motor driver some power and begin wiring the radio module's communication lines while keeping connections short. Now let's install this 5 volt passive buzzer or speaker right under the front of the drone so we can indicate its status and the switching of modes. To program the drone, we'll need this module called the FTDI or USB to Serial Converter for which we'll make a bridging connector so we can connect to the Arduino Pro Mini in the drone. Before we connect the drone and go through setting it up on the computer, let's have a closer look at the transmitter which will allow us to control it. I made this 3D printed Arduino transmitter based on the one seen in Emilo's video. Using his transmitter enclosure 3D design with some of my own modifications and added parts such as the toggle switches, charging port, and voltage divider for monitoring its voltage to know when the battery is going low. You can find the modified enclosure design and wiring diagram of the transmitter I made as well as its build video by Emilo Stuff linked in the video description. The transmitter code that's specifically for controlling our drone can also be found linked below and within it you'll see where to adjust pin definitions based on your hardware. So now we can connect the drone to a computer through the FTDI converter and open the code folder which you can find linked below along with the multi wii software and then we'll open the drone's code file. Code credits go to Electronoobs for the adapted multi wii drone code. In here is where we make changes for hardware setup and fine tuning. If you followed my exact drone wiring you don't need to change anything in the code. However you'll most likely need to swap around a pair or two of radio channel values if your transmitter's joystick values appear reversed. And you may also need to swap the yaw direction if your drone appears to turn the wrong way when steering. To upload, let's first go to Tools and make sure we have the Arduino Pro Mini selected along with its corresponding voltage rating and COM port. For a firm data connection, we'll hold down the programming connector and hit Upload. When it reaches this point after compilation, we'll need to hit the Arduino's reset button and see that it begins uploading code to the board. 
Once done, we'll go over to the multi-copter configurator software called MultiWii and open up the version of this software that corresponds to our computer's operating system. Once opened, it should look like this. Let's open our drone's COM port and hit start. Now we can see how the software interprets the drone's orientation. With the transmitter turned on, if all works for the connection, each joystick movement should come up on the software. And up here is where we select switch channels for toggling modes and initiating the drone. We'll tick a high level box on AUX1 for arming the drone, and tick the same box on AUX2 for activating the beeper alarm to know the drone's whereabouts through hearing. After that, let's click write and then read to save those changes. Now when you flick on the arm switch, the drone should allow for its motors to spin up when you increase the throttle, and the buzzer should beep when you flick the corresponding switch. Alright, now that our drone's software and firmware are set up, let's ensure the PWM outputs for the motors are in sync. And to do so, we'll be using this handy tool, the GochiFix 3-in-1 oscilloscope from sponsors of this video at banggood.com. Makers, listen up. Say goodbye to shelling out big bucks for separate instruments when you can get this device which serves as an oscilloscope, multimeter, and function generator in a 3-in-1 package for precise measurements and testing in all your electronic projects. This powerhouse has saved me headaches with my project using its oscilloscope feature for pinpointing those crucial PWM frequencies from the Arduino to ensure smooth motor operation and the inbuilt multimeter for gauging those fluctuating voltages on the Arduino's signal pins. If you're knee deep in electronics like me, the GochiFix 3-in-1 tool is an absolute must-have for your toolkit. Ready to upgrade your project workflow? Check out the link in the video description below and snag a sweet 25% discount with the code 25IMAGINE. Let's continue by finishing the drone's wiring with the motor driver signal wires connecting to their corresponding Arduino PWM pins as shown on the diagram. With the battery plugged in, we should be seeing the motors work proportionately as we increase throttle. Let's also add on the propellers and see if it flies. Unfortunately, it does not lift off and simply resets. All tutorial aside, stick with me as I troubleshoot my way to getting it off the ground. I tried adding filtering capacitors at the Arduino and radio modules power inputs which seemed to prevent the Arduino from resetting but the drone still could not lift off. So I found the motors to be the culprit. I happened to choose a set that was too weak and was missing two motors of the opposite direction. So I bought four new motors with the opposing direction pairs. The motors I wrongly chose from DF Robot only produced 6 grams of thrust each while the new ones gave 14 grams of thrust, which is more than twice the thrust of the others. This means with all four, the drone would be getting a total of up to 60 grams of thrust, which is more promising. I then clipped and melted out the motors and replaced them with the new ones while leaving connections accessible underneath to make polarity swapping easier. But then the Arduino resetting issue returned with the newly installed motors, preventing me from throttling up. I even tried adding capacitors at the motor terminals in hope that they would smooth out the voltage ripples, but with no luck again. So then I picked up on a forum thread that mentioned adding current limiting resistors between the output pins and the transistor gates would help, but that only made the drone behave worse. Then, using the oscilloscope, I found out the Arduino's pins outputted a PWM frequency of 500 Hz to the motors which was way too low to drive them, causing the extra electrical noise on the pins. So I figured out where in the code to raise this frequency and managed to get out 2 kHz at the most, but even that didn't tone down the electrical noise allowing the drone to keep resetting. After weeks of going through toil and frustration with the drone, I tried one more thing, which was as simple as raising the gyro sensor farther from the source of electrical noise, and that stopped the Arduino from resetting. However, the issues didn't stop there. Due to how the motor pairs were so out of tune with each other, the drone started to wobble side to side aggressively. Choosing to solve the core problem first, I went ahead and got an old laptop to extract some copper sheet which really helped reduce the EMF effects on the drone's hardware. Back to the tutorial, let's cut a near equivalent sized sheet of copper to the dimensions of the Arduino Pro Mini, cover it in clear tape, solder a ground wire, and lightly glue it to the underside of the Arduino while leaving the programming pins untouched. And as you notice, I re-soldered the MPU6050 back on the pin headers. So we'll finish off with the EMF blocking shield by grounding the copper plate. 
For stability reasons during the tests, I glued on some hot glue sticks as the drone's landing gear, which shows that it needs to sit on a perfectly flat surface to work, getting rid of most of the wobble. We finally got it flying. But of course, I replaced the temporary landing gear for the zip ties like the ones it had on earlier. Now we'll install the drone's FPV camera, a 3 gram 600 TVL resolution first person view camera with a built in transmitter. Let's clip off its connector and install the camera in the front of the drone feeding directly from the battery's power. Paired up with a set of 5.8 GHz FPV goggles, we should see the drone's FPV feed displayed live. Next, let's close up the drone with its cover, but first we need to secure the battery connector through the two holes made earlier and have the power wire soldered to the pins through the other side. Keep in mind the right wire polarity. So to mount the battery, instead of velcro straps, we'll secure a piece of larger rubber band as a sort of a pocket to keep the battery on top of the drone. After that, we can finally close things up. For the propellers, we're using these four bladed types that measure no more than 31 millimeters in diameter to avoid hitting onboard components, and once mounted with attention to how the blades are oriented, the motors with their propellers of appropriate directions should turn this way to push air downward. For the battery, we're using a 250 milliamp hour lipo cell which simply plugs into the connector turning on the drone. And to balance it, we can slide the battery either way depending on how it tends to veer off in flight. All up, the drone comes in at 30 grams, light enough to be considered a light wind flyer according to the drone thrust scale chart. So to get set up with the drone, you simply power it on while laying flat, turn on the transmitter, followed by calibrating the drone's gyro with these joystick movements, and after waiting for a few seconds, you can flip the arm switch to unlock the drone, and the sky is yours. But before we go out and fly, let's connect the drone to our PC and quickly go through some very basic PID tuning in multi-Wii to smoothen out those annoying pitch and roll oscillations. What you do is you gradually lower the roll and pitch values on the P column until those oscillations disappear. And down here, we can reduce the drone's sensitivity and reactiveness to inputs by lowering the rate and raising the expo value for a smoother curve. After those adjustments, we have a much more stable and flyable quadcopter. Let's do a quick bedroom flight test before we head outside. Let's fly! Alright guys, so now I'm in a more jungle-like location here with the drone. So we'll do a bit of FPV flight around some trees and see if we can get some good footage. Here we go. And if you're looking for a written version of this tutorial, then you can check out my blog post about my drone on the Elector Labs project platform, where you learn about the project in a more summarized form with images and key takeaways to get your own mini FPV drone off the ground. Check the link below and visit my page on Elector Labs. This just about wraps it up for this project. If you enjoyed the video, consider leaving a thumbs up. And if you're keen on making this exact drone, check out all the resource files linked below to use while following along to the tutorial.
Guys, we've also just hit over 100,000 YouTube subscribers together with the help of every single one of you who supported through liking, sharing, and commenting under each of my videos. I appreciate you all. And remember, you can make anything you set your mind to. While we're on the topic of making, if you're more into the FPV stuff, check out this video up here where I made this powerhouse of a five inch FPV freestyle drone that goes up to 120 kilometers per hour. If you're ready to feel some power, I'll see you over there. See ya.